Hello everyone, uh, hopefully you have something planned for your weekend. It's potentially a long holiday for some people with Juneteenth and Father's Day. Hopefully I get this out before then. And uh, I hope you all have the opportunity to enjoy uh, Father's Day with your father, or if you're uh, a father yourself, or otherwise just go out and do something fun and enjoy. Maybe fly some quads. But in today's video we are going to look at the Flywoo Nano Baby V2. This is the DC version, which is more focused on flight time and flat cruising, exploratory sort of flight, less prop in view in this one. And the FR version, which is more freestyle focused. But I also think there's an opportunity to create some different drones out of, well, it is going to take a little bit of a different carbon fiber. And I've got some improvements that I can suggest for Flywoo on this version, as well as potential new drone that might be kind of fun. Let's start with the DC version. The first thing they've done is they've changed the camera a little bit. This is a V3 of the Flywoo uh, Nano camera. Uh, I, this one has a larger lens to it, as you can see there, which does limit any potential camera angle. Pretty much, this is the camera angle you're going to get, and you're not going to get anything else. Camera angle does look adjustable, but uh, as I said, it's pretty much locked in place if you use this canopy. They did also redesign the canopy. Previously, it was kind of just uh, one sort of loop. It would now have legs out here to the other mount points. The flight controller down here is the ultralight all-in-one with Express LRS, uh, and it is an F411. And the receiver is actually external, so you can update that freely to whatever version of Express LRS you need to have to match to your Express LRS radio. Uh, on this particular version, they also have the Robo 1002 and 19,800 kV motors with 40 millimeter tri-bladed props. And just like the freestyle version, this one can come with uh, HD versions as well, which is HD0 as well as Walk Snail. In my video, you'll only see the analog version with the DC frame. I failed to mention, but the VTX, which is built into the all-in-one flight controller, is power switchable up to 250 milliwatts. The freestyle version is very, very similar. Of course, we have, in my case, the Walk Snail video system. You can also get this with HD0 for digital, or you can get it for analog as well, which would be similar to this, just with a different frame. The motors are the 1002 23,500 kV motors with quad-bladed 40 millimeter props. And both versions come with the new GNB connector, which is called A30, and it's not 100% compatible with all other GNB27 connectors. So your new A30 batteries will connect to these as well as your previous GNB27, but your GNB27 batteries will not connect to this particular connector of the A30. Both have 3D printed battery trays, which do twist and then you pull them in and out. It's a little bit fussy if you pull these out to get them back in, but uh, they come with an extra one in the package. So if you happen to tear one off, which obviously I didn't do, but maybe happens long term, you got an extra in the bag. Speaking of extras, you do get an extra set of props in each case with the tri-bladed or the quad-bladed props. And I already mentioned the extra battery tray as well as some motor wire tape and a zip tie, which they do put the tape on the motor wire, which if you know this channel, I approve. You get a little bit of uh, extra screws, gummies, nylon lock nuts, and uh, washers up there, the clear ones up here, uh, for your repair purposes if you were to need them. You also get a propeller direction card, and each does come with a single rather generic sticker. Sticker. Of course, if you get walk snail, you get the cable that you need to get the video directly off the recorded VTX onto your computer. The tiny little obligatory screwdriver. And what also comes in the box is a set of prop protection, if you were to so desire. Uh, I generally don't fly these because these are designed for outside, and I feel fairly confident in flying without these, but if you're not... They're here for your use. Flywoo also sent along this charger for charging the A30 batteries. Uh, I noticed that when I charged on this, it got above 4.35. Not a lot, 4.37, 4.38, uh, but something to note with this particular charger, it's a charge only function. There is no storage charge. If you would like to storage charge your 1S batteries, I can highly recommend the ViFly Whoop Store, which there is a new version, but I don't have it yet. This has charge and storage charge functions built right in. Of course, because it's an A30, uh, you would need adapters on the PH2 or BT20. Of course, if you already have BT20 connectors and batteries, uh, just lop off the end and put your BT20 connector on there. The DC version in analog weighs 28.34 grams. On the slower flight for both of these quads where we test the flight time, I do use the Flywoo 750. And with that battery, the weight comes to just above 45 grams. I did find I got more performance using this GNB 550. It's a red label, so it has the higher C rating supposedly. Remember, that's just mumbo jumbo. You can compare that between this on the same brand between batteries to see about the performance. 
But when it comes to comparing that C rating between brands, uh, it's not going to be reliable. Don't use that. But with that GNB 550, it weighs uh, 41 and a half grams. The FR version with Wok Snail weighs uh, just a touch over 36 grams. And with the 750 milliamp 1S battery for the longer flight, it weighs just a touch over 52 and three quarter grams. With the higher performance 550, as I previously mentioned, it weighs just about 49 and a quarter grams. The DC version does come in at about uh, 75 millimeters, motor post or motor post. And the FR version comes in at about 76 millimeters. So really Really, really close carbon fiber is two millimeters thick on both of them i have to stop everything for a minute unfortunately i've recorded and edited this video and i just got a message from flywoo that they have a new pid tune uh, for the hd editions as well as they are going to be included tribladed props in the case of the freestyle ones because they found that that worked better uh, with more flight time uh, so unfortunately that's going to skew things in this particular video but it's good information for you to know that they have updated the pid tune which i'm going to talk a lot about in this particular video and that they're going to include tribladed props with both versions doesn't matter if you get the freestyle edition or not i wouldn't be surprised if they stop shipping this with quad bladed props because i think that is difficult to tune very well at least for me for my crude techniques but it's good information for you to have about any potential purchases that as much as I talk about the PID tune, it might not apply. I do plan on charging up some fresh batteries and taking it out over the weekend and giving this particular uh, new PID tune as well as changing out the props a try. So if you'd like to see that, uh, leave a thumbs up or a comment and well, probably hit subscribe if you're not subscribed so you can come back and, and see the video with the updates that Flywoo has just sent uh, this evening. All right, so on with the rest of the video as I have previously recorded, but just note those things in the flights and all the other talking that I do is there's changes that have already been made. We're going to start with the HD uh, Wok Snail Edition. Uh, this is the DVR from the goggles, but it does not record the Betaflight OSD on there natively. That is something I did uh, post flight. I just processed that through an application, which I did have on the channel previously. And I did talk about how I'd probably do that for all uh, future videos when it comes to Wok Snails. This is not the flight footage that you would see off the VTX, but rather it's as close as I can get through YouTube and video purposes is showing what, what it looks like in the goggles. Hopefully you've already seen a lot of walk snail footage and you've either made your choice for walk snail or, or DJI or HD zero, or maybe you're still staying with analog, which I still fly a lot of analog myself. So there's no shame in that. Uh, have fun. Don't follow the hype. If uh, you don't want to follow the hype, you know, uh, but I wanted to show this flight first because well, there's a couple of things that I think could improve. I think the quad bladed props was uh, a bit of a mistake. Um, I think quad bladed props uh, on 40 millimeter is pretty difficult to actually get the tune just right. And you see uh, some prop wash in my particular video. And you'll also see that when you fly these things more aggressively and you spend a lot of time with them, that you might be able to kind of fly through some of that so it's not so predominant in the video but I think quad bladed props actually brings the flight time down, which doesn't give you that much more thrust and it creates problems for the tune. So that's something to keep in mind with this particular one. I do think the tune could be done, redone. Uh, oddly enough, something that I found in looking at the, the tunes for both of these different versions, you know, one's analog and it weighs less and it has a different motor layout versus the freestyle one, which is heavier and has a different motor layout. They had the exact same tune on them. So I think that was a bit of an oversight. Hopefully that's something that they do correct because I think these sort of quads can be a lot of fun, especially if you go to places that are, you know, potentially smaller than my backyard. But whether you want to cruise in a space even bigger than my backyard, uh, 1S outdoor quads have come so far in the last few years. It's ridiculous. Uh, we used to struggle to get more than two minutes on you know most of these 1s quads and now our batteries have gotten so much better we've got so many more motor options our props have gotten better uh, the motors are more efficient than they used to be as well so they they have there's a lot of potential uh, especially if you have any concerns about people getting irritated with your flying that uh, something this small and something this potentially quiet the analog version is more quiet uh, in my opinion than the uh, quad bladed version that you can go unnoticed or at the very least if someone does take notice that you could show it to them and they would be less likely to be as upset and maybe disarm this a, a bit by showing them something that, that fits in the palm of your hand um, 
they probably won't understand the full capabilities, uh, but it could bail you out of a sticky situation. And I think that is something that I haven't done a very good job of highlighting on this channel, as I've heard from more of you that, you know, you have you go out to fly. Maybe you live somewhere where you can't fly near uh, the house uh, like I can. So you go out to fly and then you run into people from time to time. Maybe you start your flight and then someone walks into the area that wasn't there when you started your flight and then they become irritated with you. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, while it's still fun, I just think we need some work in, uh, on the pit tune and fewer blades on our prop. But you see, we've come in for our landing and I've got my business clothes on. Uh, but we got a flight time of 3 minutes and 21 seconds, so not bad at all for HD, which consumes more power as well as weighs more. And we could still work out probably more flight time with a better pit tune. So the previous flight that I showed you, it was real calm out. And this is a longer flight, so more of a flat cruisy flight, and it's just here at the end of the battery to give you an idea of how I was flying it and the conditions. I don't have flight audio, uh, but hopefully you could tell just from the little quivers or bobbles or micro vibrations that you can see that I do have some wind above 11 miles an hour, and sometimes it would get up even higher. Uh, but the previous iteration got 10 minutes of flight time on analog, but this is HD, and we're not gonna get anywhere near that. So if you're looking for super long flight time, especially with micros, you're gonna need to get the analog version in order to maximize your flight time because HD just consumes more battery. It requires more battery power than analog, as well as there's more weight, so you have to use more throttle to support that additional weight. Uh, but I wanted to give you an idea of uh, kind of weather conditions that aren't ideal for this, as well as the long flight time if you like to do the exploratory sort of flat cruisy flight. Uh, obviously a different day because as you saw as I pulled up there, uh, slippers and shorts, so weekend flights. But we got five minutes and 26 seconds on that particular flight. Again, that's goggle DVR with the Betaflight OSD uh, post-processed on to the video. Okay, now we're on to the analog version, and I think the analog version, I, I suspect Flywoo tuned the analog version and then made the HD versions kind of after the fact because uh, the PID tune on this is much better uh, because of the weight. I enjoy the flight a little bit more because I, I'm not as tied to the image quality that some that maybe got started in this hobby with HD video. Uh, I, I came up through this hobby when our video was actually really, really bad. Our, our analog modules for receiving weren't very good. Our antennas were just kind of okay. And our VTXs, some of them were only 25 milliwatts. That's what we had to work with. Uh, so I, I don't get stuck on that as much. Uh, that punch out over the house though, you hopefully noticed, you may need to go back. Uh, that we did look like we had some ESC feedback on that. So we were getting the lines across the screen. They weren't strong, but that's something that we oftentimes see with uh, either motor or ESC feedback in the video when you get up to the higher throttle values. Uh, one of those things that I, I thought was important to call out uh, to make sure that you notice that so you aren't caught off guard. Yep, yeah, that is my daughter. She likes to spend her summertime outside watching, uh, I think she was watching Ted Lasso for the longest time. Uh, she had not seen it, but her friends had been talking about it, so she spent a lot of time watching Apple TV on her phone, sitting out in the cabana area, uh, soaking up some of the nicer weather. Again, really low winds, three miles an hour on this particular day, and that is ridiculous for us. We don't typically have that. Uh, a calm day for us is, you know, just under double digits as far as miles per hour, you know, nine miles an hour, and this is three. Uh, matter of fact, I think it was 0% humidity as well. So uh, crazy nice day. We don't get those very often. And if I do remember correctly, this particular day, I flew morning, noon, and night. <laughs> so I got all my flights in. And I, that's something I should mention is that when I do reviews, I don't tend to just fly them for an afternoon, a day, a single flight, whatever, just enough to get a footage so I can put together a video. I like to fly them over the course of a week, and I tend to fly them daily unless the weather's horrible, and then I don't fly them daily. But it gives me an overall better idea of what you should expect, um, not on just an ideal day, but on days where the weather isn't so quad friendly, especially micro quad friendly. I think that's important, uh, so it's not unusual for me to get 50 flights uh, per quad per review, sometimes more, sometimes slightly less, kind of depends. And of course, if I damage something, then I'm kind of limited on the number of flights that I can get. But that's something that has always helped me sleep at night when it comes to doing reviews is that I've gotten more flights on them. So I can be relatively assured your experience will be similar to mine at the very least through that sort of number of flights. Uh, but you could tell we get far less prop wash with the analog version, which is lower weight, fewer blades on the props, and, and we just get more flight time, so 
it's there's a lot of benefit to the analog, but if you're not interested in this particular quad, or if you're only interested in the HD varieties, uh, we've got some PID tuning work to do there, especially when it comes to those quad bladed props. I think that was a little bit of a mistake, and in many cases, I don't know that we absolutely have to have 1002 motors. I've done a fair bit of testing with 1002 motors, and I've found their prop use to be relatively limited. I think we could have dropped the weight even more. I think if you're asking me and you want to go after flight time for building something like this, uh, 1S and flight time with 40 millimeter props, drop down to 0802. Just make sure you get a 1.5 millimeter motor shaft on your 0802s. Um, I think that will get you more flight time because it'll bring the weight down. I think those generally, generally, those motors are more efficient. They've been around longer, so they've got a lot more design behind them. Uh, 1002 motors, while they're interesting, and I actually like the way these look with the purple and gold, I just don't know if they're the absolute best choice in this particular configuration. Matter of fact, I, I, I lean towards they're not. That's why I'm suggesting uh, try building if you're building with 0802 motors, and you'll get more flight time, uh, you'll have less weight, um, the downside to less weight in micros is the, the fling ability. So flinging it and going zero throttle and getting some carry over the item will be less. But that'll be pretty negligible uh, because you're only talking about a few grams. You're not getting much fling anyways. All right, our uh, faster, more acrobatic or aerobatic flight has ended. Uh, four minutes and 22 seconds, pretty good. Pretty good on a 550. Quite a few punches and loops around stuff. Let's go to the uh, longest flight here. Okay, here's just the tail end of the long flight. I don't think most people want to see the whole thing. Uh, you just want to see how it looks in this particular day and how long it flies. My apologies. Unfortunately, when I moved the OSD elements around, I try to keep them in the same places. Uh, apparently, I moved the mode that I'm flying in right over our flight time. But as we come into land here, you see that the total arm time, which is our fly time, at 8 minutes and 1 second. Previously, as I said, I got 10 minutes on this on the previous version. So actually the flight time came down by going with these larger motors. So I think, uh, yeah, 0802s would have got us more flight time. I don't have a lot to talk about other than suggesting to Flywoo and any other manufacturer adjustable camera angle. It, it doesn't seem like that's something that most of them are thinking about. Even in this particular case, it looks like they could have had adjustable camera angle, but they didn't design this mount with any ability to actually move the lens. The lens is so big that you can't really move it. Um, there's a tiny lip of protection. Sorry, I've got somebody upstairs squeaking around. I suspect it's my 18 year old. He's hovering in the kitchen, charging his phone and making something to eat, I bet. My apologies there. There's a touch of camera lens protection on the top and bottom. Hopefully you can see that. It's very, very small. I still think if you go headlong, these are so light. I don't suspect there could be damage, or I shouldn't say it that way. The potential that there's damage because of the light is going to be centered around the fact of how fast you're going and how direct is the hit. Did it hit somewhere else and then hit here, or did it hit directly here? You know, that impact is going to need to be kind of directly on the camera angle, or a camera, and then if you're flying at an angle, you know, you're, you're likely to hit the top area first because we're typically flying forward. But, you know, as you spin around, things can happen. There is just that tiny little lip. I do approve of the canopy from the standpoint of it's more substantial. So you'll be less likely, especially with the HD version, of getting any sort of movement in the canopy causing jello. And you can see on the HD version how it's much bulkier and the actual arms off the sides are a little bit different here. So we do add even more weight there. Thus... The PID tune needed to be adjusted for that as well. Uh, you also draw your attention to the fact that uh, this does not have the heat sink on it. So when you're flying the HD versions and they don't have the heat sinks on top, don't have them plugged in and not flying very long because there's potential. It should thermally shut down. It should tell you in the goggles it's overheating and then all of a sudden you just don't have an image in your goggles. But if it were to not work, one way you can manually protect yourself is to plug in the battery, you know, sit down or get to your standing position and get flying, get some airflow over that thing. These things do get hot, even in a normal circumstances. So if they're sitting on the ground in the summertime with a great deal of heat, I just worry that we're going to end up damaging these in some ways because uh, we're really coming around to that first time of running these without a heat sink in summertime, at least here in the U.S. 
Something else that I was very interested in was running different props, not just different number of blades on the props, but different size props. By the way, this is how I remove props. I pinch the bell and I pinch the prop and I twist and pull, twist and pull, and it comes right off. But I wanted to see about running 45 millimeter props because that could really increase our efficiency and our thrust. But unfortunately, in this particular edition, there's this spot where this cable comes and you probably can't see it, but it does just hit those cables. So if I were to arm this quad, it would probably sever one or more of those cables. Unfortunately, we just can't quite get 45 millimeter props on here. And that's one of the ideas that I think in either configuration that Flywoo could do. If you just make this frame in dimensions two or three millimeters longer from motor post or motor post, you can get 45 millimeter props on here. 1002 motors work well with 45 millimeter props, so that's a good match. You'll get more thrust and you'll get more flight time and will still handle the prop for aggressive flight very, very well. So that's that's my idea for Flywoo to make a, a maybe a senior edition of this, the Flywoo Nanu Baby Senior, um, or any other company that wants to make a quad that's micro, 1S, and outdoor. Uh, try using these 45 millimeter props. I do think that's something that we're going to see as companies always seem to iterate and whether they take suggestions from this channel or any other channel or they have their own ideas, I don't know. But that was something I was hopeful that I could do was to run 45 millimeter props. I think in this particular case with the HD version, not going to quite happen. But let's check out this other version over here. By the way, with these props, see how that goes on uncentered? Yeah, I did that once. When it comes to the bottom, and it actually feels like it's on, we've got these holes off center and the, the 1.5 millimeter motor shaft. So you can get the props on and they're not centered. So uh, if you change out props, make sure they're centered on the motors. Otherwise it'll do run away and freak out. So unfortunately with the dead cat style, our 45 millimeter props hit the canopy right over here. So it's not really doable either, as well as having too little clearance for my comfort down here with the receiver. Uh, it does clear, it does rotate through freely. Um, it's just, that's so close right there. I would be worried that if you hit the throttle hard, if we got any flex in this carbon, that it could come up and, and nick that. And if that were to be a wire instead of just heat shrink, and that, that could be catastrophic. But at any rate, uh, on the front end, the props are gonna hit the canopy mount. So those 45 millimeter props don't work on the DC version either. So I do think there's a lot of potential for both editions, for Flywoo and for other micro drone companies of using those 45 millimeter props and these 1002 motors to make uh, quads that are more fun to fly. They fly longer and they produce more thrust and they should handle these props very well. The one thing I am concerned about these props and outdoor flying without prop protection is how durable are they? I just don't have a lot of experience with that. And because of the small hub, as well as the small size of the blade connected to the hub, you know, do you bump up against something and you snap off a blade? That's one of the things I don't know. So uh, that's going to take some exploring by maybe some of you have built quads using these props on 1002 motors and you can provide us all some feedback on your experiences, uh, especially the prop durability with these uh, 45 millimeter gem fan props. So depending upon what you're looking for, if you are looking for these particular quads, I see the price is listed at about 129 for the analog editions and about $100 more, 229 for the HD editions. Uh, of course, as I said, I think there's some pid tune work that we can do. We can get longer flight time uh, out of this quad with a better pid tune as well as just better overall flight. I thought the controllability was okay. It's just the prop wash handling that makes me think that we can gain some efficiency, efficiency excuse me, with uh, a better pid tune as well as having those options of using 45 millimeter props on slightly bigger frames. I think that's an interesting combination. We really haven't seen much yet, but as I said, I'm looking for feedback from some of you. Maybe you've designed your own frame. Maybe you have a little uh, CNC machine and you cut your own frames and you've been testing this stuff out. I don't have one of those, so uh, fairly interesting, but they are fun, uh, especially the analog version. I think the analog version with tri-bladed props are a good time and a good match, especially if you like to fly 1S. I kind of prefer 2S, but that has to do with, I think, the size of my space. Uh, whether you like exploratory cruisy sort of flights or if you like more acro sort of flights, just because this one's designed around long flight time doesn't mean you can't have fun with it doing, you know, relatively tame 1S sort of freestyle flights. I thought it responded pretty well. And also because I'm not that discernible, what do you think of the new lens on this camera? So I bought a few of the V2s and now they have a V3 already. 
So what do you think about that? I haven't had a chance to use the ones I've bought, but they're fairly interesting. I did notice that the Express LRS version was different on each one of these. Uh, not terrible different, but if you're using Express LRS uh, 3, you'll need to do some updating because it doesn't come with version 3 and we our major versions have to match on Express, L Express LRS. Excuse me, get tongue tied here as I talk longer. Uh, so... Not a big deal though, because we can flash these without having to do any beta flight work. They're independently flashable. Uh, so it's something to be aware of because some people really don't like doing those things, but it's the last point that I'll leave you with in this particular video. Again, hopefully you've got plans for your weekend, doing something fun and exciting, maybe getting together with others and celebrating the holiday weekend, whether it's Juneteenth or Father's Day, or or maybe you have a birthday or significant other sort of holiday hitting uh, your neck of the woods. If you do have any comments, questions, suggestions, or otherwise, please let me know in the comment section below. I appreciate your time. Thanks for watching.